to clean the mirror of your telescope. I noticed that this mirror of this Soligor MT808 inch telescope, which is a F4 telescope, uh, wide angle for astrophotographic telescope. The mirror of it is quite dirty, so what I have, I'm going to do is to clean it. So first is to remove the mirror cell, the whole mirror cell. There are screws, and in this case we have uh, six screws all around, and I have removed them. This is the last one of them, and the mirror comes out. Eight-inch mirror, as you can see. So what I'm going to do now is try to clean it. Uh, for cleaning it I use just normal tap water, lukewarm water, it's one, two drops of the uh, washing of liquid. Uh, first lukewarm water on it just to remove the, all the loose particles and dust. Then what I will do I take a uh, I drain that, I add a little bit of uh, lukewarm water with some uh, uh, with some um, washing of liquid then I will remove that then the, uh, with some um, uh, cotton wool at the same time with the lukewarm water I just put it place it in there just to sink and soak then, without applying pressure, just drag it on the surface, drag it on the surface. So any other loose particle that is not washed by the thing will be gradually removed. Then I will uh, rinse it again, and then I will do uh, another washing with the uh, distilled water, the ionized water. If there is no, if hopefully if you not leave any any kind of uh, watermarks because there are tap water in the south of England and this is this has a lot of uh, lime scale in it so you just uh, make sure that there is nothing left on this and then after that what I will do I will uh, uh, put it uh, on a towel uh, making sure it's on a soft surface and then I will uh, do the rest for the first thing, I have to remove the full mirror uh, from the its cell. This is kept by this uh, thing. I can wash it with the whole thing, just in the water, but it may risk the, you know, uh, damaging the this metal parts of it, corroding them gradually. So. I will try to remove these ones also. Let me see. I may remove one, I may not remove. Okay, what I've noticed is that there are corks here, and this cork will absorb moisture. And also, there is a lot of dust. If I clean that, I have to clean this just manually, also, probably by hand, separately. I don't want anything from here coming in contact with this. So, I try to actually remove the mirror from itself. That's better. Doing anything else, I just want to point to the fact that uh, I have put tape in any position that I'm as a reference point just to make sure that I can put it back on the same position. Um, I will do try to do the same. I have a mark here written 91, and opposite of it, I will put also a tape just to make sure that these are. Uh, when I put it back, I put it back exactly on the same spot. Okay, I've not removed the um, these holders, brackets that hold. You have to be very careful when you are applying the, the screwdriver. It's better to hold the tip with your hand and then guide it with the other hand, and uh, so avoiding any any damage to the mirror. So, this is the mirror now. Hopefully, it is loose. Yes, I can take it out. It, it moves actually. And now I'm going to put it in a, on a towel and take it to the kitchen and just clean it. Okay. And now you see the mirror in my hand. 
It's quite heavy. I can say this is probably around one and a half kilo. The flash just to show more of the light. It's quite dirty. It couldn't be really used any better. We have to clean it. You can see those parts which have not been in exposed to the elements are kind of cleaner. Let me go and put it on the top. As you can see, my sink is made of metal and the edge of it may actually scratch the mirror if accidentally I hit it by there. So I'm just using this plastic top and uh, I fill it up with water and put my mirror inside it. And just run the water over it. Let me do this. Okay, this is the mirror now inside the water and I'm running the water over it. Let me just use a little bit of this look from water. And I will turn the mirror just to make sure that all corners of it get the good treatment of water. As you can see there are particles on that. See, I'm holding it up, so just trying to take it under the tap water, all the corners of it. Now you see there is more, there is yet, it's partly cleaned a little bit of the loose particles, but uh, some of the hardy ones forming a layer on top of it needs to be going. I will mix it now with a little bit of the washing up liquid just a few drops that's it and I leave it here for a while and let the loose the particles get soft and uh, loose and come up you can see the mirror looks a lot better but yet I can do it better there is some hazy material on top of it so just leave it there again and I will do the process again. As you can see I've tipped over the water a little bit and now I'm going to put some cotton wool on, on this uh, let them soak and then I will start to clean. Uh, but before that I will just drain this water add some clean water again and uh, start the process. Okay as you can see I'm taking it under the water, tap water again so let the water run across so look for water over the mirror. The not hot, it's not very cold, so just look warm. And now I'm going to, uh, until the water is a little bit above the mirror, uh, I will just stop it. Now I put the cotton wool over here. Okay, I have some cotton wool. And just put them over the mirror until they soak. I put two or three here. I will make sure they're completely soaked in the water before I do anything. I will not pre apply pressure when I'm doing the cleaning. I just gently remove them. By the way, it's the time to add some uh, washing up liquid. Just a few drops. Slightly add more water to make just a good mixture of the soapy, uh, liquid soap and the uh, water. Um, and when I'm talking, this uh, are getting these cotton walls are getting soaked completely. I want them to be loose. So, what I will do, 
and uh, this consistency just without applying pressure I'm just dragging it over the surface I'm not applying any pressure I don't want any grit or any dust particle or sand particle to scratch the mirror surface. Just doing the cleaning again like this, gently. Gently, I'm doing it, I'm not applying any pressure. And I just change them from time to time, just make sure that they have the chance to actually lose and loss and lose any dust particles that is with them with the cotton. Just go in the circular movement. And turn it over, go in the inner circle again. Just without applying pressure, I'm doing this. As you can see, the mirror already looks a lot better, but it can't be made better yet. To drain this water carefully and I will take the mirror out again take it under the tap then another layer of water and a little bit more uh, a few drops of the washing of liquid the thing is that you should not rush through it so I'm not rushing through it I'm just letting it uh, soak and uh, even I may drain this water again and apply another layer of water and soak to it and another set of the cotton and you can see I can open the roll of the cotton wool and just put some over the mirror to let them soak. Same here. The same again out of the unfurled uh, cotton wool. Put it here to soak, absorb the water. Another one here. And I let them absorb the water, moisture, and uh, I start again to drag them on the floor. It's not applying pressure or anything, as I mentioned again. I insist that no pressure. Taking the mirror again under the tap water, root form tap water. And I leave it now here until the water comes floating over it then I add a few drops of the washing of liquid just let soak so uh, with every washing you can see some improvement I've seen people recommend to use the isopro pro okay, now I'm going to do another round of cleaning uh, again without applying pressure I'm just moving the uh, cotton wool across so by this stage most of the dust and the loose material or grit has came off there is nothing there what is you can see is probably smoke or uh, dust particles from cigarette or any kind of uh, oily vapors that they may exist if you do this uh, use your telescope or leave it for a long time near the oven or kitchen or anywhere that there is such material and those ones gradually become loose by you just applying the 
uh, washing up liquid. And as you can see, I'm just dragging this on the surface. No pressure is applied. And I don't use the same cotton all over. I just use different just in the case if any grit or dust particles are trapped. Dust uh, is quartz practically, most of what you see as dust. Uh, we are not talking about other things like skin uh, flakes or anything like that. The pure dust is just quartz and they are harder than a glass and they can scratch glass or coatings of the mirror. So we try to avoid that by just not applying any pressure loosening any material and coating that is unwanted like a oily or smoky material which makes the mirror look uh, slightly misty so uh, you continue this until your mirror fills and see you can see that it's clean. Uh, I know it can be tempting to look in your cupboard and see what kind of solvents you have that you use for cleaning and other things. Don't be tempted, don't use any of those materials. You may damage the delicate uh, uh, you know, aluminium or silver coating of the mirror. It's just normal tap water with some washing up liquid, that's, that's enough. I've seen people recommend to use the isopropyl alcohol. You don't need to use it, but if you have it, mix it half half with the water. So 50% of that and 50% of the normal or um, distilled water. But you don't need it really. Usually you can find such a means. In the meantime, when the mirror is being soaked and cleaned, you can just check this. Uh, tube of the telescope and try to remove any dust that may go black into the mirror. Also the you can clean the cell. I clearly see that the mirror is significantly cleaner than when we started. You can see that for yourself. So I feel there is yet some hazy material and We'll see what can I do with that. Probably another washing. Um, it makes sense that we say it's not dirty because the main mirror is at the bottom of it, like a bucket. It's practically a light bucket. When at the bottom it collects all the dust, it falls on it and just stays there. But this one is in the open current, so uh, unless a few things that just get trapped in it, otherwise there is no chance that things stay there. I've cleaned the inside of the tube also, if you notice here. For the secondary mirror, I felt that it's not very dirty. It looks quite clean actually. I just uh, blew some air with this air pump and uh, get rid of some of the visible dust particles, but the rest of it looks clean. Yeah, it doesn't look dirty to me. As you can see, I've drained the water again. It's important to drain the water, empty the you know, top that you have, take the mirror under the running water, look warm. And as you can see, we already see a lot of improvement in this. It looks much, much better. So what I'm going now to do is to do another round of the cleaning uh, with more of the washing of liquid and let it soak get the final result and I will rinse it with the distilled water the mirror cell looks relatively clean I just wipe it with a little bit of cotton just be careful not to leave anything any of this fiber 
can't really clean it, doesn't need much. But I will just be the damp before installing it, let me just put something there. My mirror looks clean, as you can see. And I'm going now to uh, drain the water and empty the tank and just and empty the top and just use the running water to clean it, then distilled water, then drink. Change the water again because I noticed that the hazy layer is not gone. I changed the water, I added more of the washing up liquid and you can see the difference. The mirror looks much, much more cleaner. And I can say that this is really good now. I'm going to leave it here longer and uh, make the soapy water a little bit more uh, concentrated with adding more of this. Uh, it seems it's worked. So I'm going to leave it here for a while. As you can see, the mirror is uh, now completely cleaned. You can see from the reflection. And what I'm going to do now is to just uh, run the distilled water over it before it gets dry. The mirror shell in the back, and uh, I just took it gently under the tap water in the bathroom. Uh, just cleaned it gently just I didn't do much just uh, gently I just run the water through it and I'm leaving it here to dry completely rinse the mirror with the distilled water and it looks absolutely clean the reason we use distilled water is that we normal tap water has a lot of uh, chalk sediment usually in it and this chalk or limestone lime scale and so we have to that's actually calcium carbonate. You have to use something uh, which has no ions or sediment in it. So distilled water is the best. You can get it from the mechanical shops or either to battery, you know, changing shops or Halford. You can go and get it. Doesn't cost much. Taking it under the running water now. Let me just make the water a little warmer. Warm. And. Uh, I'm just cleaning it from any washing of liquid that may exist. I'm telling you this mirror it looks really clean now. Okay, and now I'll put the mirror on the towel. It's not finished, but I'm just draining this uh, water tap. Have a water tap. This is the bottle of distilled water. You can get it from the mechanical shops or Halford. Uh, I got it from the mechanical shop and just I'm going to put it, uh, put it over the mirror completely, rinse it with that, then I will put it back on the towel and then try to dry it uh, with the hair dryer. And at the same time, if there is any drop that has remained, I just use the a little tissue just to remove it from the old towel. And uh, not tissue, probably. It's better. So um, I need two hands, so I have to put the camera down. I will show you the result after this. As you can see, the mirror is now completely cleaned, and I just put it back on the cell. Put the mirror. I put the mirror now, uh, almost an, at an angle, so anything that is there will just drop down. As you can see, when I turn off the uh, flash you can see that it's completely clean good reflection of everything so that the uh, persisting to stay I just use a tissue gently touching it and the drop will go I'm not rubbing against it I just use it to absorb it as you can see when I touch it the water disappears gets absorbed because and I will repeat it for every one of these drops that are existing here. Droplets. Okay, I'm doing it. Almost all the 
droplets of the circuit. I'll use again the air blower. Now the mirror and the cell are beside each other. I lift it gently, put it here, and I uh, make sure that the alignment of this 91 mark with the uh, tape that I put here will not be disturbed. Yeah, that's the tape. Yeah. And 91 and the tape. And I will put the brackets back to hold the mirror in its place. And then I will put it in the tube. But I will be careful that I have to remember to, to collimate the telescope again. That means to adjust the mirror in a way that uh, everything will be centered. A good idea to take some pictures or make video when you are doing it, just in the case if you want to go back. So I remember now there is a circular patch here, as you can see, is a extrusion mark when they are making this holder, which is made of plastic, this part of it. And that part uh, was slightly away from the one in the 91 mark. And uh, so I've done it now. I, I think that's actually it's not 91. That was the other way, 16. But anyway, this way we read it at 91. And now I can exactly put it back the way it was. The tape is also helping me that and that. And you can do the same just to make sure that I put everything back in the same way it was. Now I'm going to bring the brackets and before it's uh, dust settles on this, uh, I will be uh, having the full uh, mirror with the mirror cell and installed in the tube. If you're putting back the screws, be careful. Uh, the same screws exactly go to the same place. So you have to be vigilant on that. Uh, I tried it and this one actually was here and was about uh, one centimeter higher. So it was not the place for it. And yeah, the pitch was not the same. So we are now going for doing the correct thing. So you can mark them, you can even write numbers uh, on the holder and where the mirror is. When you tighten it, don't over tighten these things because they will be breaking. And uh, they are elastic in this part, the top part of it is a separate thing which is uh, rigid but this part is uh, elastic made of rubber and that's it i have now done the mirror uh, with the air blower i just blow the occasional dust and uh, just with the brush also gently cleaned it everything that i will find and that's it this is done you can now uh, i will now put this back on the uh, telescope. So avoid the over tightening. Uh, you have to uh, first do it by hand, then use holding the screwdriver with your tip of hand, and then with the other hand guiding it carefully. Uh, I will not tighten up one or two nuts on this bracket, then go for the next one. I make it a little bit loose, then I will tighten this one a little bit, then a little bit this one, then a little bit this one, a little bit then. So in this way, all of them will be tightened equally. That is important because otherwise your mirror will be really out of collimation, you, no matter what you do in the back. So you have to be careful here. Completely cleaned and all done in the kitchen without any sophisticated equipment, just normal tap water and, and soapy, uh, liquid soap. And uh, the most sophisticated was the one that you have to use some uh, mm -hmm. distilled water, you can buy it from anywhere. Um, for putting the screws back, I will put first this one, then this one, but I will not tighten them completely. Then this one, then gradually go in there and all around and then tighten them. Okay, uh, I've now fitted the mirror and attached the uh, screws. Uh, hopefully you will be able to do it. It's a little bit tricky in this part because you have to make sure exactly the holes are um, falling uh, against each other and then push it in. If it is too tight, you may have to loosen up these uh, uh, rings which hold the 
bracket for attaching this to the mount. If you loosen them up, you can actually push it in and just, or you may have to put it vertical and put the mirror cell up downward and adjust it, then it will fall into place. That's it. Now the mirror telescope is done. Let's have a look inside it. Okay, the mirror is now completely clean, as you can see. And I think the reason the mirror gets uh, full of dust is because that when you put the mirror vertical like this and the mirror is on the lower part, any air which contains dust, of course, which is inside the tube, when it settles and you put a cap on it and settles, it just falls on the mirror. So probably the best way to store it is horizontally in a box or in a bag, carrying bag, or put it the other way around, mirror top. That I don't recommend, but horizontal is probably the best. And that's it. And as far as I can see, the mirror looks collimation is uh, good actually. But anyway, I will do a star test on this whenever I take it for observing. And I'll put it on the mount and do a star test. At the moment, it looks all right to me. This is my mark, um, and that was for the mirror. This is for the uh, actual tube. And the holes, as you can see here, exactly fall in place. I'm now going to put the screws back. Yeah. <laughs>